Hello, welcome to the 2021 Oxford Pat. Looks as though nothing's changed from the previous couple of years on this. We've got 24 questions, calculators start with some multiple choice. So I'll just do the multiple choice ones here. What have we got up here? Question one, what's the next number in the sequence? 132, 243, 1024, 3125. Right, these numbers jump out a little bit because that is two to the five, 32. 243, that must be three to the five, wasn't it? It's 81 times three. So yeah, that's three to the five. That must be four. Yeah, that's two to the 10. So it's four to the five. So we need to get six to the five. I suppose we could put it in the calculator, but I haven't turned it on yet. So that's six times 36 times 36. Got to end in, oh, it's only one that ends in six. So it's D. That's not a bad starter. Question two, the spring ones, right? These are always sneaky. What is the effective spring constant of the combination of springs shown in the diagram if each spring is const as spring constant K? Right, okay, so we've got that uh, for a particular force, so the force isn't changing. This is where you want to start on these spring ones. So we've got K times X for one spring, and that is going to be equal to K prime, so the spring constant for the combination, the effective spring constant, that's what we're going to call this thing here. That's going to be our k prime multiplied by x prime, which is the extension for this setup. So what extension are we going to get? So let's look at the top bit then. So for the top bit, we're going to get one third of the extension. So that's going to be one third of x. And this bit, you're going to get half the extension. So that's half of x. So what are we going to, because you're splitting, the, the reason we're getting those, in case that isn't clear, is you're effectively splitting the force across the spring. So if you're looking at the top one, and we've got force F, then you're going to be having a third of that over each spring. So each spring is going to extend a third of the amount. That's what we got, and then half the amount on the bottom. So that is going to total up and give us X prime. So that is five, six of X. Now we can stick this in here. So we can have K times X is K prime times five over six X, cancel the X's. And we get that K prime, which is what we want, is six over five K, hopefully. And uh, it comes out as C. So it's easy to get those ones the wrong way up with spring constants. Right, let's evaluate this then. So we've got, oh, we've got three different sums to do here. One of them is just the straight multiplication because that first one's going to be 2 times 10 because every term that we've got from n to 1 to 10 is just going to have this 2 in it. So we've got 20 for the first one. Then we've got an arithmetic series and then a geometric series. So we need to take off this. So we've got to take off the sum of, well, half of the sum of n from 1 to n. So the tenth triangular number, essentially, which is going to be 10 times 11 over two, as in half the number of terms multiplied by a sum of first and last. Then we've got geometric series. So a r to the n minus one over r minus one, if I can say it the right way around. So that is a is two, r to the n is two to the n minus one over two minus one. So that's 20 minus uh, what's that? 55 over 2 plus, oh, I put 2 to the n. I meant to put, that'd be 2 to the 10 because there's n terms. I don't know why I didn't put the n in. So 2 to the 11 minus 2, oh, all over 1. So that just goes away. So we've got 18 minus 55 over 2. So 36 minus 15, 55 is minus 19. So we got 2 to the 11 minus 19 over 2 gives us C. All right, that was fine. Question four, five different ions accelerated by rest. Well, from rest, I mean, by the same potential difference. You can't be accelerated by rest. From rest by the same potential difference. What will have the smallest final velocity? So the acceleration that you're going to get is, well, the energy put in is going to be Q times V. You know, voltage is joules per coulomb multiplied by coulombs, and you're going to get the joules. And that's all going to kinetic energy. 
the v is a constant so we need to get we want the smallest final velocity v is going to be proportional to q over m all square rooted everything else is a constant so if we want small v smallest v means smallest q over m so let's just look at our q over m's what have we got we've got two over six well two over seven is smaller so it's not going to be that one three over seven is bigger than two over seven three over nine is bigger than two over seven four over nine is bigger than two over seven so it's b all good Question five, gravity on the moon is one sixth that of Earth. OK, ball dropped on Earth from height H takes the time T to reach the ground. From which height should it be dropped on the moon? So it takes the same time T to reach the surface. Right. OK, how are we going to piece this together? Uh, this might be one of these ones of write things down and then see what comes out. Right, well, let's do our conservation of energy first. I'm not too sure I'm going with this. MGH is going to be a half MV squared. That's when it hits the surface. So we can get rid of those. We don't want, we want to get rid of V and put in T. So V is going to be, well, the change in velocity is the accumulation of the acceleration. So that's G times T. So that means that we've got 2GH is equal to G squared T squared. So T is going to be equal to the square root of 2H over G. And we want T to be the same when G has been reduced by 6. So we have to have the same reduction in H so that those factors cancel. So it's going to have to be B. Oh, OK, that wasn't as bad as it looked at first. You know, if in doubt, just write down some equations and see what happens. All right, two unbiased dice are rolled and the numbers obtained are added. If the probability of getting the sum S is PS, which of the following statements are true? Oh, great. OK, so we need to work out all of these things here. Well, let's do some of the easy ones then. Well, the last one's got to be true. P11 and P3, they're symmetrical because everything's symmetrical around seven when you're rolling two dice. So they're going to be the same because we're one up from two and one down from 12. That with same reason in two is going to be wrong because six and eight will be the same as each other. Now we're going to have to, because there's multiple options here. So it's not going to be A or C, but B, D, and E are still possible. So we're going to have to go through which ones of these count. All of them do, don't they? Oh, how annoying. Right. So let's start with the top one then. So for 10 and 11, we're going to have for 10, we've got four, six, six, four. Five, five. For 11, we got 6556. Five, and then for 6, we're going to have 1524334251. So, yes, that's fine. So, 1 is in, so it gets rid of B. And then we've got 2, 3, and 4. So, 2 has to be 1, 1. 3 is 1, 2, or 2, 1. Four, one, three, two, two, three, one. So we've got six of them there. So for seven, one, six, two, five. Yeah, these are just going to be symmetrical. Three, four, five, six, four, three, two, one. So they are the same. Oh, but they want it to be greater. So we've got no three. Right, so it's going to have to be E. So these things are going to have to be the same. We might as well check while we're at it. Oh, we already know seven. There's six of them. And then for five, we're going to have one, four, two three three two four one so that would be six of them as well if we multiply by one and a half so yes that's correct so we've got e no, that was fiddly rather than anything else question seven a light ray follows a path through three media separated by plane boundaries as shown in the diagram with refractive, in, refractive indices m1 n2 n3 right okay wonderful so we haven't had a question yet. Oh, which of the following sequences put the refractive indices in order of increasing value? So increasing value. Well, we know here, well, if we're refracting towards the normal, so N1 must be less than N2. So we've certainly got that. And then here we've got, what is that saying? Is that going to be... 
well, I suppose we're saying that's total internal reflection, not that it's just a mirror. If it's a mirror, I don't really know what that means. I'm not sure I've ever looked at what the um, refractive index of a, of a mirror would be. So let's go with total internal in reflection then. So that means that N2 would have to be greater than N3 if we're getting that, um, because it needs to be moving away from the normal. But if it, so what, what can we say about M1 and N3 then? So, well, if it was N1, it would come back out again. If N3 was equal to N1, we'd, we'd reappear if we had that. So it must be that N3 must be moving, well, it's moving further away from the normal. So N3 must be less than N1 in order for it to reflect otherwise it will go all the way through so n2 is the highest which order are we wanting to go in we want to go increasing value so you want n2 at the end so it's got to be c or d and then we want n1 in the middle so it's going to have to be d so yeah n3 m1 n2 that was tricky assuming that's what they're going for that they want that to be total internal reflection otherwise a little bit stuck what to do question eight if f of x is at g of x is at find dy dx where y is all of that all oh, right okay so right f of g of x is going to be f of g of x is x plus three squared and then we need to take off g of f of x which is x squared plus three. So that is y. So y dash is going to be 2x plus 3 minus 2x, which is, well, the 2x is cancel. So we've just got 6, which is a. Oh, OK, that was really straightforward. Mix of GCSE and A level stuff. What is the current at the point P in the diagram? All right, OK, right. well, we need to split our voltage across all of this then. So we've got here. So how's the voltage going to be split? We got one, we got a half and we've got all oh, that's going to be two thirds on all of that. So we're going to split the voltage in proportion. So we we'll multiply everything by six. So we're going to be splitting six to three to four in our voltage is going to be split that way so that means we're going to then get our so the current is uh, well yeah well we use v equals ir so the current is going to be v over r which is going to be v is going to be 4 over 13 divided by 2r so that is going to be 2 over 13, well, 2V. I should have put V in there. So 2V over 13R, which is A. Yeah. Uh, made that one a little bit more involved than the usual resistor ones, but not a lot. Which of these represents a simpler form for cos inverse sine X? Good grief. Um, hmm maybe try some values. I mean, these are very different, these answers here. So what do we know? If, if x was equal to a half, say, then we would get cos of sine of the mon 1x would be, um, that would be th uh, root 3 over 2, wouldn't it? So do any of them give that? So if we had 1 minus a quarter square rooted, that would be root 3 over 2. So that one can't be, that one can't be, that one can't be. Oh, and that one can't be. All right, so it's A then. Right, that was um, a fortunate <laughs> way of getting that one out of the way quickly because I don't know what we'd have done otherwise if they'd given something a bit more tricky than that. But fortunately, try some numbers and see what happens. Right, question 11. Consider the following five graphs. OK, for which graphs could the area under the graph potentially be a measurement of energy? Right, force against distance. 
So, yeah, I mean, it, well, it definitely is. I mean, that is the definition of these things, that if you integrate F, the S, then you're going to get the work done. So, yes, that is a yes. Force against time. No, not even close. Velocity against time. Velocity times time. No, that's just distance. So mass against velocity squared. Hmm. Mass. Yeah. Right, I'm going to come back to that because it's making me wonder because you've got half mv squared is kinetic energy. Uh, but that's mass times velocity squared. It doesn't have the half in. Right, think about that. Voltage against charge. Yeah, the VQ is is uh, definitely. And have we got any which is just one? And ah, how annoying! It could be A or B. So it's not C. It's not D. It's not E. So it's either A or B, depending on what we think of four. Which it could be potentially a measurement of energy. So it actually measurement is not just saying a measure or some way of calculating something. Because to me, a, a measurement of it being energy means you're actually getting the energy itself, not two times the energy. Um, hmm. OK, I'm not sold on that, but I'm going to say yeah, I'm going to say no. Maybe. Yeah, I'm gonna say no and go for B, but I'm not I'm not sold on that. Uh yeah. It it might be. It might be A. And I don't really know what to do about it. So it's it's a little unclear. I mean this isn't gonna make or break the paper. But I'm gonna go B. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with that with a slight reluctance about it and just push on to the last question. So question 12, which of the following integrals are equal to zero? You do not need to evaluate them. Right. So we're looking at things that are odd or even. So odd as in the we've got this relationship going on, that minus f of x is f and minus x. And the odd ones, uh, these are the things that have got rotational symmetry about the origin. So we're looking at sine, but not cos, because cos is doing that. And um, polynomials that have got odd powers, you know, things like um, power, you know, cubics and things like that, and not even powers. So this is why they're called odd and even, really, because ones that have got odd powers, you know, you rotate that round and they're just going to cancel out. You know, they, they overlap on each other. And the, the positive side, if you're integrating the same distance either side, positive and negative, and you've got a positive area there, which is the same as the negative area there, and they cancel out. So this is what we're looking for. Things that have got sine and odd powers and not things that have got cos and even powers. So yes, yes, no, no, yes. One, two and five is D. So there you go. That's our 12 multiple choice questions. They were fairly straightforward as a part from that question 11 which I'm not convinced by either way. But, you know, maybe someone else has got a good idea on that. If you've got a knockdown solution for number 11 that you fancy sharing, then stick it in the comments. I'll be interested to have a look.